Well, good day. I'm happy to uh, be uh, alive and awake and looking forward to this uh, beautiful day that we have before us. Uh, the sun is shining. There's lots to be grateful for. And today uh, I have a, uh, a special guest, Michael Bullen. Uh, we're going to be having a discussion about uh, uh, not just physicality, but how uh, we're literally electrical spiritual beings having a physical experience and how the spiritual aspects do affect the physicality of our life, but, uh, but how the physicality also, uh, I believe, affects our true self, which are eternal beings, spiritual beings, who are having a physical experience. And Earth being kind of the field of, of uh, education and uh, schoolwork where we can actually experience the physicality and the duality of life, which is necessary uh, using all of our six senses uh, to, to be able to, uh, to, to experience joy, to be able to experience sadness, uh, to be able to experience fear or faith or love or hate. Uh, these, this duality, we, we have to take on a physical basis in order to experience these things uh, that cannot be experienced in the spiritual realm. So. Michael, why don't you uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you and, uh, and you know, this, this connection between uh, the spirit and physicality. Sure. Uh, my name is Michael Bolin and I'm a licensed professional counselor. I've been doing licensed counseling for about five years now and I've always had an inner spiritual interest in pursuing uh, the deeper things of life, things that didn't meet the eye. Uh, things like understanding emotional states, uh, spiritual truths. Um, and then I also had a passion develop uh, about physical health because I noticed so many people around me were physically unhealthy. And in my work as a licensed therapist, I realized the connection between people that were depressed and anxious uh, were almost always physically unhealthy too. Even people that weren't overweight, they'd have multiple things, autoimmune conditions, uh, different uh, struggles within their body, uh, things that even their doctors couldn't explain because it seems that doctors weren't getting to the root level of the issue. And so I started to become fascinated with overall health, uh, even though I'm licensed in the mental, emotional, spiritual area, I couldn't deny the physical connection. And uh, as I was researching and, and found some of your work, Dr. Young, I thought, wow, a established scientist, uh, an established doctor who understands the mind, body, spirit connection, that it's not just some uh, hocus pocus thing, but it's actually how we're designed. And so now uh, I use myself as a, um, my own experimental lab to see what works. And uh, I haven't been sick in five years. Uh, I don't eat perfect, although I'm really aware and try to keep a balance with the alkaline diet. I'm by no means perfect with it, um, but I feel I've discovered some inner truth that we all have in our soul, in our spirit, that what you think, what you believe and your expectations, your body will respond to. And about five years ago, when I started to expect and believe that my spirit and soul uh, were stronger than any physical ailment, my body started to respond. That's, uh, I mean, for most people that are hearing this, uh, you know, this, uh, this may uh, just resonate, hopefully, uh, within our own unified field and that spiritual entity that resides within us, uh, which is really the essence of who we are and being able to connect with that. So what you're telling me is, is that uh, you've been able to, to, to reawaken uh, this, this living, indestructible creation that, that gives you uh, that that you, you've put on the clothing of physicality, and now uh, you're connecting back with that to help you have a, a more joyful experience here on earth. Is that somewhat what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. I, I found there's this inner component that it's hard to even put words to, um, but that when it occurred to me one day that my beliefs, uh, my connection with my soul, 
and the thoughts that emanate from that actually set the tone for my body. And what that started looking like initially for me is, um, and, and I actually got a lot of my inspiration from the Bible, from the truth of God's word that uh, so often in the Bible, it talks about uh, Jesus overcame sickness. Uh, he took away sickness. Well, I look around at people and I'm like, where's this taking away sickness? What's the deal? And the conclusion that I came to was that people nowadays aren't sick. People are having the uh, symptoms of their unhealthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's different from sickness, something in the air that just takes you over and you can't help it. What people, when you notice autoimmune things, when you notice chronic headaches, people that are, oh, isn't that sad they got cancer? That's not sickness. That is the residue, the effect of a horribly unhealthy lifestyle that's completely in our control. And of course, with the pop culture and the media and the, the giant political financial engines have convinced most of us that your sickness is way out of your control. It's just in some bugs flying around. There's nothing you can do it didn't sit right with me. So in my spirit one day, it occurred to me, wait a minute, Jesus did take away sickness, meaning there's nothing on earth more powerful than me. I'm not going to set the expectation that I'm not going to get sick. So it really was as simple as I started sometimes having uh, maybe a symptom or two. And let's just say one of the pop culture things is to say seasonal flu, meaning you know what, it's flu season, nothing you can do, you're just gonna get the flu. That didn't sit right with me, that, that's, that can't be correct. And so as I would look at my own mental patterns, I might realize I had an old thought process that was expecting in the fall to get the flu. I assure you, when you expect something to happen, it most likely will. So even you're going into the fall being like, oh, I'll probably get the flu this week, that inner expectation, something in your soul, impacts your body, you now start getting these symptoms and you go hook, line and sinker, maybe even you go get your flu shot. So as I learned to transcend the expectations in the mind and say, I'm not gonna get sick this flu season. Actually, my expectation is I'm not gonna get sick ever again. I started noticing, wow, I feel pretty good every day and I'm not sick. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh those are really good thoughts and 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 uh, when we look at mind body spirit and we look at it as, as a, a three-legged stool if you're not addressing all areas of that if you take one leg out then, then, the, then, the, then the chair falls over and uh, it, it's not it's not balanced so what happens I believe that many of us become disconnected to our true essence our true life force our true being, which is eternal in nature, that resides within, within this physicality, uh, that we lose contact with that connection because of lifestyle, because of what we're eating, what we're drinking, what we're breathing, uh, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, even what we believe. Uh, you know, you have to be careful what you believe because you will manifest many times that belief system and it can affect so you know uh, especially it, you know with the the whole covid thing uh that's focused around i i believe the induction of fear and fear uh is a, an emotion uh it's a it's a it's a feeling uh that we can act on which is the emotion it's energy in motion but we, when we when we go there we're actually believing in something that really is futuristic that has never taken place. So we're fearing something that may or may not happen. And yet that fear <laughs> takes up our thoughts, you know, and many of our actions and what we do about it. And our thoughts uh, can create metabolic acids that can lead to sickness and disease. And these, this disease is not a disease by name. It's a full, uh, it's a force expulsion of waste products from our over evaluating our overthinking processes, which require electrical energy to produce chemical waste that if not properly eliminated through the four channels of elimination can build up in the interstitial fluids can build up then in the connective tissue. And we start feeling the scent irritation, the sensitivities, the inflammation, even the degeneration 
of, of our own body, our physicality, because of what we're thinking, what we're feeling, and then what we're believing and acting upon that. So uh, our thoughts are very, very powerful. Our feelings do and can, you know, equate into actions of which, uh, or non-action for that matter, that can affect us on a physical level. So if we could just think of ourselves as spiritual beings having physical experience rather than physical beings having spiritual experience, and we can look at the ancients and what they said, you know, uh, that we need to love ourselves, we need to love God, we need to love our neighbor as ourselves. The love is the motivating feeling that creates the emotion that, uh, that evolves into the creation. Creation was, uh, you, you see this word a lot, creation was, was a point of love that began with love that then equated into uh, the release or force of energy, which equals you know, Einstein's theory, uh, E equals MC squared. Matter is created by the force of love, not by the force of hate. And, and so from love is the motivating uh, component of not just loving our neighbor and loving God, but also loving ourselves and understanding that our consequences have, uh, our choices have consequences. And these consequences have been labeled in current modern day uh, medical theory as diseases, but they're not. Our diseases are consequences of personal choice. You don't get sick, you do sick. You do it with, you, with what you eat, what you drink, what you breathe, and what you think. And when you take on personal responsibility, rather than put that blame upon a phantom virus, which has never been isolated, never been purified, never been cultured, and never been then introduced into an organism that produced the same symptoms that were found in the first specimen where the disease was found. The reason why that has never been done, and there's no published studies that ever have validated the efficacy of the germ theory, of the viral theory. And the reason why is because you cannot, you cannot replicate something that doesn't exist. You can't test for something that doesn't, that doesn't exist. So when you're going out and you're having COVID testing, our uh, retro, uh, antibody antigen, uh, PCR testing, you, you're going to end up with either a false positive or a false negative, because what are you testing? Even, even the inventor of that test, uh, Kerry Mullis, said you cannot use PCR testing uh, of, of, retro, uh, of, of DNA, R, RNA to determine you know, the existence of, of a virus. You, you can't do that. Uh, there's, there's no label on influenza or HIV or Spanish flu or Zika or uh, Ebola or, or now COVID, COVID-2, COVID-19. I mean, this started in the early uh, 2000s. This is, this is all about, about not restoring health and energy to our bodies. This has to do something more with economics, with politics. And, and I'm not a politician, but you know, it's, to me, it's obvious that uh, the people, as we look at the epi epidemiology and we look at uh, the, the cases of COVID, you know, we look at the cases of influenza, we look at the cases of H5, nothing's really changed, you know, and the treatments haven't gotten better mm -hmm. per se, other than those who are embracing the responsibility of their lifestyles and making alterations in those lifestyles and opening up the channels of elimination to remove that dis-ease, that poison that's poisoning, rather than using a poison to treat the poison, which is the germ theory, you're using, you're taking personal responsibility. Why am I, why am I feeling the way I'm feeling emotionally, mentally? Why am I feeling this way physically? because I'm choosing to do this. Now you might say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm not choosing to be sick, but you are with every thought, with every word, with every deed, with where you live, how you live, how you, what, what you're exposed to, 
in, in your, your external environment, what your internal environment is exposed to. And when we get back to the science, we have to start out with, well, where's the science to back this up? The last 35 to 40 years, I've been studying the effects of, of thoughts, words, and deeds, what we eat, what we drink, what we breathe, what we think, and how it affects the most important cell in the human body. That's the erythrocyte, the, the, the red blood cell, and how it affects our white blood cells, which are managers and janitors of internal cleanliness. I mean, you know, it says in the Bible, you know, the cleanliness is next to godliness. Mm. I mean, he's not saying that getting rid of viruses and bacteria is next to godliness. He's saying cleanliness. Mm. And I, it's with a capital E, a H. Not a little, you know, when I say he, I, I don't mean to disrespect, I respect God. I believe in God. You know, I, I do, I can always do better, you know, but, but I'm aware that, that my life is, is uh, and, and where I am today is the evolution of, of my choices mm. and that I'm responsible through choosing, you know, and that's why we came here to freely choose not to be forced, not to be controlled, not to be manipulated, but to be able to freely choose. And so consequences have, choices have their consequences. And consequences, not disease, is what we're really talking about here. So if you're sick and you have a cancer, you have to come to a place where you admit and accept responsibility mm -hmm. for the choices of your life. And then you need to expand your mind and open it to this ideology that you have complete control over this physicality. And the spirit, which is eternal and indestructible, is craving that and wants that reconnection. This is when you uh, begin, like you have experienced, joy. Because men are, women are, that they might have joy period. That's why we're here, to experience joy, happiness, fulfillment, love. This is what we want. We, we don't want, you know, sadness, despair, fear. These are the things I think that you've experienced in the last five years. And I think more and more people, and I'm happy to hear that, Michael, that you've come to this conclusion, that there's an interconnection uh, and, con and choices do have consequences and personal responsibility is here. We got to stop blaming these phantom viruses. That's it, 100%. And right along with our two different fields, in you're often studying the scientific effects on the body, things like the interstitial fluid and uh, the cellular uh, integrity. And I've gotten to see firsthand how now the more emotional, spiritual things like anxiety, uh, depression, uh, how these impact the body. And, and these are actually measurable too. Uh, every time you have an anxious reaction in the body, it triggers your nervous system, which activates adrenaline, which activates cortisol. Cortisol is catabolic. Catabolic things break down things in the body. So your anxiety is very much negatively impacting your body. And basically everything you were saying about personal responsibility, that's what I do in my work too, is learning to shed the victim mentality. So pop culture now has coached everybody into feeling like a victim. If you're sick, uh, you're just a victim of some bug that attacked you, nothing you could have done about it anyway. If you got cancer, oh, if you're anxious, oh, it's not you, hon. It's just uh, life's fun and fair to you. Not that you probably need this pill people are brainwashed into thinking you are powerless you are a victim so sit here and use our products and maybe you can live a decent life so uh, when somebody's that brainwashed into unconsciously feeling like a victim meaning it hasn't even occurred to them yet that they're in a victim mentality it's an art form of how to bring that up to the person in a way that they can even receive. It's almost like talking to a zombie. You tell them, hey, do you know you're a powerful person and you're actually in charge of your body and nothing could make you sick or make you anxious if you knew who you were? That blows people's minds when you're used to feeling like a zombie victim every day. So that's a lot of what I do in my work now. It's helping people realize, although you're operating as a victim, 
that's not your true identity. And as you learn to shed that victim mentality, you can get into that place of vitality. Well, I'm so happy to hear you talk like this and so happy that you've uh, connected to your true essence and really realized that, that you're the sum total of, of your choices and, and that you're taking responsibility and, and that there are answers and we do have control. I like, I like uh, uh, the scientist Alexis Carell. He's a Nobel uh, winner in, in, in the field. He became the father of modern day transplantation. And Alexis Carell uh, passed away in the early 1900s. He received his Nobel Prize in, in, in the 60s, so much later after his, his death. But the reason he received it, and his testing is quite unique, was that he discovered that we have the ability to live forever. That death was a choice. That it was a, it was a, it was a an outcome of choices that we made, uh, and it was the consequences of our limited belief system, our limited uh, understanding of how to manage and maintain the delicate pH balance of the internal fluids of the body. You see, he kept, until he pulled the plug, he kept a chicken, a chicken heart alive for over 20 years. Hmm. And he did that by managing the interstitial fluids of the chicken heart, by changing those fluids out, because cells of any organ or gland require electrical energy, life force energy. And that is transported through a matrix of electrons found in fluids. And so in those fluids, it's transported on a saline solution of salt. It's why when you go, on, you know, I hope you don't have that experience, but if you have to go to the emergency room uh, under you know, a, a, you know, an accident or what have you, the first thing they hook you up to is saline. If you ask any medical doctor, you know, uh, is salt good for me? Should I be taking salt? They question that. And yet the emergency room hooks everybody up to salt as soon as they come into the, the emergency room. Well, the emergency room in any consequence of choice as defined as a dis-ease in the interstitium, it is salt that transports life force energy. Now, here's something on a spiritual level. On a spiritual level, salt is what keeps the spirit body connected to the physical body. Once that sodium drops below the normal range, spirit separates from physicality and there's death. So what Alexis Carell did is significant. What he shared was if we can manage and maintain the cleanliness of the fluids and keep that matrix of sodium and those electrons saturated in any organ, any gland, any body of physicality, you can have eternal life. Hmm. That's so, so powerful, I mean, that's amazing that that was eternal measurable. Life, yeah, eternal life on a scientific range in the realm of physicality may be theoretically impossible because of the toxic world we live in. We're eating toxic food, breathing toxic air, drinking toxic water. I could use the word acidic water, acidic air, or I could use the, uh, the macro word, which would be acid rain. Rain, acid rain is raining on our planet. It's affecting our forests. It's affecting our oceans. It's affecting the coral reefs. It's affecting acid rain inside our body from the ingestion of animal protein, beef, chicken, pork, and fish, dairy products, cheese, all acid that take energy from the body, that use up our sodium levels, that destroys that matrix of life of sodium ions so that energy cannot transport, it cannot deliver to the cells. Our cells are electrical by nature. They produce chemical waste. So if we want, to, we want a longer experience, if we want to enjoy a pain-free, joyful life, if we want to thrive rather than survive, we need to continue to eat whole salts, not demineralized salts, but whole 
salts, you know, uh, sodium being the number one uh, uh, salt or mineral that we need, uh, which is why our blood, our saliva, our sweat, our tears are all salty. It is because that is that salt water that electrical energy can transport, and it's what keeps the spirit body with the physical body joined together creates a solution or a soul, S-O-L, in colloidal chemistry or in religious terms or spiritual terms, a soul, which is S-O-U-L. Soul is defined by taking two dissimilar embodies, one physical, one spiritual, one more dense matter, one more finer matter, joining it together it's being held by a salty solution wow. that's being energized by electrons that's keeping us whole. Hmm. And God was right. Cleanliness is next to deity. It is next to godliness. And so how do we manage and maintain the internal cleanliness with our thoughts and our words and our deeds? So powerful. And the word that comes to mind for me is purity, having these pure interstitial fluids, uh, pure, even when Paul talked about, think of those things that are good and honorable and true and right. These aren't just recommendations to, uh, you know, you should probably think about it. These are, there's a design to how this all functions. And it seems the powers that be have taken our ignorance and monetized it against us. Hey, you know, there's not really a good design. You just are who you are. Unfortunately, you're kind of a victim. Thank God we've developed products to help you maintain this half healthy lifestyle. And it's so penetrated our culture now that, and I know you've experienced a lot of this, you're speaking the truth, the things that you're saying, the connections you're making, uh, it, people's ears shut down immediately to the idea, well, do you know that actually, uh, you're more powerful than you think you are in your choices to maintain the health that you want. Many doctors, won't, professionals won't even listen to it. It's like their ears are trained to, to lock up at these things. And so I, I'm thankful that it, it appears a more holistic, uh, functional medicine type um, uh, view of medical things is starting to get a little more widespread where people aren't shutting it down as quickly as they used to. Um, but my goal now is just to help people to realize that you can have the health that you want to have, but that it is like that trifold thing you talked about, the body, soul, spirit. Um, in my view now, and I'm curious what you think about this, especially in light of epigenetics and things that show how our choices, our thinking impact what we experience. I almost see it now like this. Let's stay on a, on a, uh, a three-tiered thing, uh, the body's on top, the soul and the spirit, that if you make perfect body choices, perfect food choices, uh, you're, you're doing everything you can, perfect high alkaline water, if your soul's stuck in toxic emotions and toxic thinking, that can cloud up your interstitial fluids, that can throw off your things. And that's why, especially in my own life, I've seen that when the soul gets healthier, when the thinking and expectations get truer to the design, the body responds and then it's like uh, extra cherries on top when you bring your eating choices into really good alignment. Well, it's interesting that 80% of all heart attacks are caused by thought attacks. Wow. Fear. Fear. Yeah. Uh, and uh, people are overwhelmed by fear right now. Fear is an acronym that I state is false evidence appearing real. And, and in the duality of life, the opposite of fear is faith, which is what I suggest is the first attribute in thinking healthy. When we're, when we're living our life in faith and gratitude, we're present, we're connected. When we're living our life in fear, and most people do, unfortunately, then we're projecting into the future of something that might happen. It's not yeah. certain, but we fear it, therefore we think about it, and we loop that, and the looping of it requires electrical energy. Electrical energy, when our cells are, are using that life force energy, produce chemical waste, such as lactic acid, and you can actually induce 
a cancerous condition, which is called, caused by lactic acid, that if not properly eliminated, let's say gets thrown into the brain or into the breast tissue or, or some other organ. And this is what causes these degenerative diseases. There are acidic wastes that are not being properly eliminated and, and things restrict. When we go to fear, we uh, actually restrict the nucleus totalis uh, solitaris ascites, which is a bundle of brain cells in our brain cell that controls our temperature, our breathing. When we're living in fear, we might even go into hyperventilation. The reason mm -hmm. for that is we're suppressing mm -hmm. these ascites, this bundle of cells that manages all that. And, and so it's, it, it takes a physical uh, symptom that expresses that. And when we relax, when we breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth, when we meditate, when we pray, when we go to gratitude, when we start walking in faith, this is when, when we go to gratitude, catch yourself in fear, and you're thinking in the future about something that might happen. Start thinking about your children and how blessed you are. Start thinking about, you know, all the many blessings. I, 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 when I was a boy growing up, we used to sing a song called Count Your Many Blessings, Name Them One by One. And, and as you start thinking about how blessed we really are, you know, and focusing on that, not what we don't have, but what we do have, that our cups are more than half full, not half empty, and that, you know, we have a choice here. We just have to catch ourselves and start practicing staying in the present rather than reverting back to the past, which is acidifying, or projecting into the future, which is acidifying, you know, because the past is called the past because it's not, a, uh, it's not present. Present is called present because it's a gift. Every day that you wake up, you're given a gift called a present. And that present is now. So with now, if you will stay there and start focusing on gratitude, that will change your attitude. 100%. Okay? And when that does, you start connecting to your spiritual self. Meditation, particularly the one that I recommend is transcendental meditation. You know, I believe in prayer. I believe in faith. I believe faith is the beginning step for making all things possible, you know? Uh, but when we stay in faith uh, and believe in all good things, mm -hmm. that all things are possible. And I'm not being over uh, optimistic. Somebody says, well, you're just a optimist. I'm a, you know, somebody else is a pessimist. And yes, that's a duality of life. And that is also a choice. Mm -hmm. and, and the consequences of that, if, you, if, you're think, if you're a pessimist, you're either thinking about the past, which is over, get over it, and or you're not present or you're projecting in the future. So the connection can happen when you begin to focus on your blessings, your, your gratitude, what you have, what you don't have, when you start focusing on, on the uh, unified force and accessing that unified force, whatever that may be defined to you, it's God's work in action. Uh, you know, God did not, uh, did not create the earth. He organized it with matter that had already existed. This is, this is, this is all, you know, the great scientists. And the more we know, the more powerful we become because knowledge is power. And really, uh, you touched on this a little bit with the, with the, the media and, and, and pop culture is that we've been programmed. And this is the true virus. Virus in Latin means poison. We are being poisoned by this false narrative. And the false narrative has economic and political uh, motives. And these bad actors that are, that are facilitating this pandemic uh, to a fake virus, a phantom virus, here again, that's never been isolated, never been cultured, never been shown to cause any sickness and disease, because how can you show a pattern using the gold standard for identification? Uh, there's, no go, there's, there's, there's no evidence that, that proves that. There's no research that proves the existence of HIV, that proves the existence 
of hepatitis C. So what we do is we fear that. Oh, you have been test positive for COVID. Oh, I'm going to die. This is a false narrative. Yeah. That's all induced to fear. And fear is, is the, the protocol of the adversary. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the bedrock, right? That everything else can grow out of. And the trouble now for people is, and this is what I do in my narrative therapy with people, we all live by a set of narratives, most of which were formed when you were too young to know they were forming. When you were eight, think about it. If you were eight years old and got attacked by a dog and he bit your arm really bad, your natural nervous system reaction is when next time you see a dog, you're going to get a panic attack. You're going to start sweating. Your body's going to respond because you're scared. Now, when that gets continually wired in day after day, and now every time I see a dog over the course of 30 years, I'm terrified. That nervous system program is locked in cement. Meaning even if in your mind, you know, well, I know technically dogs aren't that bad. When you see that next dog, your nervous system's gonna flare up before your mind even becomes aware to tell it to calm down. And that's where I notice people struggle the most is these feelings that come from their past programming. So the feelings they had of seeing their parent die of something, die of cancer, uh, hearing somebody get the flu really bad, it causes a feeling in the body. And most of us haven't learned to transcend our feelings. We just do whatever our feelings tell us. Oh, I feel scared right now. It must mean it's terrified and I should do this. Even if it doesn't quite seem right, even if there's no research to back it up. No, I'm afraid that must, they must be telling the truth. And so there's this principle I try to help people with through mindfulness meditation of learning to sit with your feelings as though they're not indicative of truth, they're just indicative of what was wired into you through your past. And part of rewiring now is being able to sit in them and process them kind of like, think about a stagnant pond versus a flowing river. A stagnant pond is just this stagnant water, these stagnant feelings that have been sitting there pushing you around for years. If that water is gonna push those stagnant feelings through, Kind of like you were saying with restricting, you've got to become unafraid to sit in those emotions, allow them to be, allow them to flow through in a way where you can redefine sickness, redefine how you see the flu, how you see things on TV. And then when you can sit in the feeling and not be pushed around by it is when you can rewire your system. Uh, I, I agree with you 100%. You know, as you were talking, I was thinking about the way the Russians uh, how they approach oncology and its uh, diagnosis and prognosis and, uh, and how uh, the United States uh, uh, oncology approaches uh, prognosis and diagnosis. If you, if you have cancer, the cancer is not re revealed to you personally. It's revealed to the family member. And if you, have, if, you have, if you have a prognosis that's not good, you're not ever told that you have a week to live, six months to live, because that's self-limiting. Once you have that programmed in your mind that I've only got six months to live, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna die in six months. Expectations, yeah. Expectations. And then if you're told that you have cancer, some of the scariest words, you go to the doctor, what are you thinking? Oh, what if they find something? I don't feel good, what if they find cancer? And then out of the mouth of the doctor, you say, yes, you have cancer. And cancer is not even a disease. Cancer is a symptom of, uh, of interstitial acidity that affects the cells that's causing a cancerous or a, a degeneration of the cells. So cancer in itself is a symptom of something else. And this is why we're so successful in reversing cancer because we don't treat cancer we actually open up the channels of elimination and, and, and begin the force elimination mm -hmm. of the acidic waste, metabolic, dietary, environmental, respiratory waste that's causing a compromise in the interstitial fluids, in the intravascular fluids, in the intracellular fluids, and then start going back to nature. I call it the COWS program, chlorophyll, oil, water, and salt, and start building healthy stem cells, healthy erythroblasts, healthy erythrocytes, healthy white blood cells, 
rather than trying to kill something off. Mm -hmm. This whole kill mentality is a false narrative. Mm -hmm. There are no diseases. There's only symptoms of dis-ease. Mm -hmm. And this dis-ease is not caused by a virus. It's caused by a choice of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And these are the consequences. The question is, is how do I clean up the internal environment? And that's why the PH Miracle revised and updated and the PH Miracle, PH Miracle for diabetes, the PH Miracle for cancer, PH Miracle for weight loss. Even though I've titled these, these books, they express an environmental approach. Uh, and, and, and that's what I specialize, uh, specialize in, internal environmental approach to internal purity, internal cleanliness. But when you, on a, on a feeling, when you hear those words, I have cancer, the difference is you should never hear those words. Mm -hmm. You're not avoiding what you have is you have an increased amount of waste that hasn't been eliminated. It's built up on the interstitial fluid. It's built up into the connective tissue and that acid's gone into the breast and we have breast inflammation because of acidity. Mm -hmm. And we're going to reverse that. In fact, I'm not going to do it. You're going to do it because it's your, your body, your life, and your choice. That's right. And, and you the have the power. Right. You've got to believe it's possible. And I think that's the hardest part for most people as they're programmed and they have feelings associated with the word cancer. They have feelings associated with death and health. For them to start a new program and be willing to rewire, they've got to believe that maybe there's a better way. You've got to take the step of faith, take the courageous leap, use your intuition a little bit and say, is this really the best there is? Or is this a program that I've been living? And I would petition to you too, as you were talking about the buildup of inner toxicity physically wise, that there's a buildup of emotional inner toxicity. Uh, people that have chronic panic attacks, chronic, chronic fight or flight activation, the world becomes scary. They're, they're so pent up, their emotional state is so like a pond within, uh, until you learn how to feel those emotions and process them from a healthy perspective, you're just going to play out the pattern day after day. And, and that's the difficult part is I watch so many well-meaning people uh, that are so stuck in how they feel and in the nervous system activation. And uh, they end up feeling powerless to it and almost come to a place of acceptance. Well, I'm in this world for a little while. I'll try to numb the pain when I can. I'll take this pill to at least help me deal with my anxiety. And really a lot of it is just helping people to see that sliver of life of being willing to believe that something better is possible. Uh, and definitely, well said, uh, it's definitely possible uh, if you realize, you know, foundationally that you are experiencing at whatever level, irritation, inflammation, ulceration, or degeneration, the symptoms of the choices that you've made, and these are the consequences, which are 100% reversible mm -hmm. if you can, through intervention, open up the channels of elimination and, and provide an environment that's conducive with health. One of the main problems is, uh, I believe in conventional medicine, is conventional medicine has taught us that there are many diseases, but only one health. There's not many healths, there's just one health. You're either healthy or unhealthy. You're either clean or unclean. You know, you're either balanced or out of balance. Mm -hmm. And so there are, not, there are not many diseases. There's only one disease. And the one disease is the over acidification of the body fluids due to an inverted way of living, eating, mm -hmm. drinking, breathing, thinking and and feeling and then believing because our thoughts do become bi biology you have to have energy to have a thought when you're thinking when you're talking when you're moving you're you're using life force energy from that energy just like a car that emits carbon monoxide it's using a fuel okay if you put a sock 
in the, in the gas pipe, in the exhaust pipe of a car, the engine stops. And so that's all that's happening with, with a human being, the physicality. Mm -hmm. But it's not only congesting the physicality, it's actually suppressing who your true essence is, that's which right. is light, which is truth. We call it a gut feeling. We call it uh, intuition. When we're, we're going to a quiet place, you know, we can actually hear our spirit speaking to our physicality. Mm. But you can't hear that with all the noise going on. And that's why it's important to go to a, a quiet, peaceful, or a happy place. Mm. That's why we all love vacations. Mm. It's an opportunity to actually get out of our heads, hopefully, where we can go to our happy place. Yes. I'm sure many of you have a place you love to go to, which is your happy place. But that's not just a place you go to outside, but you can go to your happy place inside mm. your body. So this is where you can really connect then to your true essence, your spirit, okay? And that's why I recommend transcendental meditation because you're going to a place of no thought mm. and a place of peace, a place of joy. And when you come out of that trance, which happens for about 15 to 20 minutes, mm. uh, all you've done is close your eyes, you know, and you think of one word, and it's not about the word, that just helps you to take your mind off other thoughts. You think about right. this one word, and you repeat it in your mind over and over again, till the word disappears, and literally you go to no, no thought. Mm -hmm. And it's the most relaxing, joyful place. Prayer has an essence of that, where, mm -hmm. where it's taking you to gratitude, where you're thanking God for all your many blessings. Yeah. And yes, it's okay to ask. And we should ask, we should thank and we should ask. And we should be grateful when our blessings come. Uh, but there's no happen chance, I don't, I don't believe in that. Uh, yes. Everything is, is, is predictable to, to a lesser or greater degree. Uh, and, and, and if someone wants to get sick, you know, or wants cancer, I can give you the protocol for that, just as I can give you the protocol for health. But there's only one disease or disease and one health. And that one health is to restore the alkaline design of the internal fluids of the body. So things are flowing. The cells are being bathed in alkalinity. That's what Alexis Carell did. He was changing the fluids out every 72 hours and replacing that with fresh alkaline mineral rich fluids. And that's why that heart could live for an indefinite period of time. Chickens don't live for 20 years, mm -hmm. let alone their hearts. But their hearts, their soul will continue if the environment is being managed. And so that can be done on a personal basis. So I believe all of this is under our control. All of this is, our, uh, is, is, not, is not limited. The only thing that's limited is, is what we decide is going to be limited that we can live a life of joy and happiness if we choose to do that. Or we can become, like you say, uh, live as a victim in our lives. And, you know, today's society is, society owes us something. Society owes us a living. I hear this from different cultures. You know, we, society, because of our past, owes us something. Society, the world owes you nothing. The world is giving you everything, an opportunity to learn and to grow, the opportunity, yes. you know, the blessing yeah. to be here in physicality, to experience the duality of life. That is the greatest of all blessings. And it doesn't matter what color or what creed you are, we all bleed red. Hmm. You know, and That's that right. blood, is made by the same foundational elements. I call it the COWS program. Chlorophyll, oil, water, and salt. And when we practice good uh, principles that uh, will restore the alkaline design and restore uh, the foundational uh, stem cells and blood cells, we can enjoy life uh, totally connected. So just take a few minutes here and.
Just kind and of you mentioned it up for us. It's been great talking to you, Michael. I'm sure glad that we made this connection. Yeah, absolutely, Dr. Young. It's been a pleasure and an honor. And uh, I'll sum it up by associating it with what you've mentioned a few times in regards to being present. Being present is not just this, uh, you know, uh, Hallmark card kind of, yeah, that's, that's, it's essential to life and everything, body, soul, spirit. The now is always happening. We only have access to realize who we are and how powerful we are in the now. If you're in your analytical mind, uh, thinking toxic things, if you're replaying old patterns from your past, many of which are related to food. Many people have food addiction that's not just physical, it's emotional. When they're feeling stressed, they go to their acidic foods. And so all these patterns are in play, but to get truly present, like in this meditation you're talking about, there's many ways to get to this place of no thought, but it's like a great reset. And you can do it a hundred times a day if you need to. But the goal is to get present, to realize the patterns you've lived in your life up until now are not reflective of truth. They're just reflective of your choosing. And fortunately and unfortunately, much of your choosing is reflective of how you were wired as a child when you were too young to know the difference that you were being wired. So we get present now to start a new system, a new program based in truth, based in the present that will allow you to shed the narratives, the mentalities, the addictions that have kept you bound in the past or future worries and you can get present and your body will respond, your spirit, your soul. And it's not about being perfect today. It's just about creating that space enough to be present that you can heal, you can grow. And, uh, and just like you're saying, Dr. Young, we can all be restored back to that design, that alkaline design, body, soul, and spirit. Uh, well said, Michael. We can begin thriving rather than surviving. And if you get an opportunity, you can go to uh, thriveon.com and watch uh, the latest documentary uh, about what we're talking about and, and aspects that if you embrace can make a significant difference in your life. And, and tomorrow uh, we have a, a, a documentary being released, uh, The War Against Women's Breast and the use of mammograms and radiation poisoning and, and the increase of breast cancer and what's causing this uh, this epidemic. And so that documentary starring uh, Dr. Galena Magalco, who is my uh, partner and associate, uh, will be starring in that. And she's a wonderful, incredible doctor who does non-invasive medical diagnostics because we believe in doing no harm. And so with that, Michael, I would like to thank you. Is there a way that people can contact you? Yes, uh, my website is www.thetotalwellnesscounselor.com and uh, you can go over there and I have a few resources on there and uh, my contact information. Great, thank you, uh, Michael. And if, if anyone wants to read some of this research or, or my books, you can find my books at phmiracleproducts.com or you can find my research uh, and Dr. Galena Magalco's research at www. Uh, www drrobertyoung.com and all this information here that we have for you uh, uh, is, uh, is free uh, for your, your, your choosing. So choose wisely. Yes. Thank you, Michael. All the best. Thank you so much, Dr. Young. Well. Bless you. God bless you too. God bless America. That's all right. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.